with these flex alerts. A lot of people are wondering, what is the state of our infrastructure here in California that we have to even have these? Joining us now to talk more about that is Catherine Rice Boyd. Hi, Catherine. Good to talk to you. How are you? I'm doing great, Logan. Thank you. You know, as we all try to reduce strain on the power grid, we limit the use of electricity. A lot of people wondering, like, boy, in this day and age, I mean, we even still have to worry about uh, running our dishwasher when it gets 90 degrees or hotter. What's going on with our infrastructure, do you think? Well, first of all, I think we're putting all our eggs, eggs in one basket, which is never a good thing. We don't do that in our stock portfolios. And so we believe you should have a diversified portfolio, not to say renewables like solar and wind aren't great. But as we know, Logan, the sun doesn't shine all the time and the wind doesn't blow. And we have not cracked the battery storage technology yet to rely on a single source of just renewables. You know, just a week ago, the California Air Sources Board approved that plan that would ban the sale of new gas-powered vehicles. There are some rules with, that take place in 2026, uh, and then the, the big date is 2035. Are we ready, do you think, at this moment, or will we be ready for all electric transportation? No, we won't be ready. We only have 11% of the needed charging infrastructure that we need to make all this happen. And so taxpayers are going to pay billions as we rush to put new chargers in while we're trying to keep the lights on. In my opinion, this is not a plan. Um, I think we should have kept on our natural gas power plants as backups. We should have kept Diablo power plant running. And instead, we're going to pay, uh, the consumers are going to pay billions of dollars for all of that decommissioning. And then we're going to pay an equal amount to get them all back online because we cannot sustain this level of needed electricity on only renewables. It cannot be done. And we're going to see it here coming up. And we need a plan that is all of the above, all of the above energy. Can we please talk about not just electricity, but talk about hybrid vehicles. Let's talk about low carbon intensity liquid fuels. Let's talk about hydrogen, renewable diesel, renewable natural gas. Why are we leaving available, affordable energy resources off the table? Yeah, it's a great question. What do you think the answer to that is? I think we are very politically driven in this state, and we have not done the work needed to have the right mix of a transportation fuel that allows the quality of life that the consumers have come to experience. Everybody, you, me, everyone, expects in the morning to wake up, hopefully to wake up, and turn our lights on and heat and cool our homes and drive from A to B affordably, reliably. We do not have a state that does that. And in the name of climate change, we are less than 1% of the world's climate change emissions. So how much economic harm are we going to bring on this state so we can claim we're leaders when we are not acting like leaders? Yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens in the next several years if uh, leaders do change their tune and maybe add some of those other uh, forms of energy uh, into place. Catherine Rice Boyd, good to talk to you, Catherine. Thank you.